Welcome to Essential Oils for Self-Sufficient Living. This is an introduction class um, and we do have big plans to do some workshops on some of these topics I'm going to talk about in a lot more depth, um, but this is going to be a very general um, introduction class. For those who do not know me, my name is Jody Amos. Um, I am a silver wellness advocate with doTERRA. I've been with doTERRA for four years now. This is my family. We live on a small ranch in Texas. And um, this is a, kind of a topic that's near and dear to my heart. Um, it's something my family has been trying to do for quite a while. Um, I do have an animal science background. However, even having a degree in animal science, I feel like there's a lot of things that are not being taught in schools that maybe were once passed down in generations that somewhere eventually it just stopped and people weren't taught these certain things. Um, I dreamed this class up in the um, middle of the night one night thinking that, I, you know, I am still learning all of these things and I'd like to share with you some of the things that my family has started doing. So um, we're diving into this together. So whether you are, you know, brand new, don't know anything about self-sufficient living, or you are a veteran, um, hopefully you can glean something from what we have prepared here. All right, so we're going to talk about five ways to live a more self-sufficient life right now. And these are things that you can do whether you live in town or out in the country, whichever. Hopefully there's your some um, components of self-sufficient living that you can add to your life. Okay, hey, so ways that you can prepare for self-sufficient living um, is obviously growing your own food, starting a garden, um, and we'll talk about that. Um, backyard chickens, that's kind of like a fad now. In town, they allow backyard chickens. Um, and then um, some cooking and cleaning, DIY, um, and cooking from scratch things. We had some crazy shortages happening over this last year. And so a lot of people were scrambling to get food or to get cleaning supplies. And so um, we have some good stuff in here for you to be prepared for those as well. Um, your medical needs, some healthcare needs. And then all of this is about getting rid of debt. Um, being self-sufficient means that you're not owing anybody anything. You are not um, you know, reliable or responsible for um, paying somebody back and you are completely free. All right, let's dive into these. All right, the first one is growing your own food, right? Starting a garden. So here's a little picture of a garden um, with some raised beds, depending on where you live. I live on very black dirt with rocks. So we have done raised beds in our, um, front yard to keep all the coyotes and the deer and everybody from eating it. So, um, but growing your own food, having fresh food, fresh food year round is probably the key to being self-sufficient because that is a necessity. You need food, right? Um, and there's healthier food options. If we can just walk outside and grab lunch, that's just so cool. It's so empowering as a mom and just as a person to be able to just feed yourself. Just kind of crazy that um, 100 years ago, people could do that in like horrible conditions. And um, it's something that's not as uh, well known on how to, to grow your own food. Um, plus it saves money, right? We're saving money, we're making better health choices. We're not going to Walmart and they have all of the, uh, the, the stuff right in front of your face. You're like, oh, well, I need some chips. Or I need some candy. I need all of this excess stuff. And then you go into Walmart for two things and you come out with $100 worth. I don't know about you guys, but I do that every time I go to the store. So just some practical ways to get started. Um, again, I mentioned raised beds, um, but you don't have to go to Home Depot and buy a whole bunch of lumber and spend a bunch of money because we're trying to save money here. So Use any kind of container that you have. Use tires, feed troughs, um, wheelbarrows, whatever, mineral tubs, whatever you have uh, that you can put dirt in, you can plant something in. Um, so start with something really simple. 
and then purchase some organic soil. You can buy it in bulk. We've gone to a yard where they loaded a trailer and we brought it home or you can just, if it's a small garden, go buy some bags of organic soil. Um, these little cuties in this picture are Kelsey Watson, it's my Upline's children, and they are starting their seeds in um, seed starting trays. We are in January, so there's a lot of things that need to be started right now. So this is kind of a fun project, family project for you to do, um, is start your seeds in these trays. They're super easy. Um, just keep them in, indoors, and then depending on what you're planting, then you transplant them outside. So here is a guide. This is from, uh, I believe this is from the AgriLife Extension website, and this is um, spring vegetables. So it's kind of hard if you don't have a clue, like I didn't have a clue a couple years ago, I had to look up what grows at one time of the year based on where you live, because we all have different weather, right? And I live in Texas and it's very unpredictable, but this is a good guide on what you can start planting um, right now. So here's a bunch for January, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower, collard, collard greens, um, eggplant, kale, lettuce, all of those are great to start in January. And then um, you start those indoors and then it tells you when you can transplant them. So pretty simple. All right, so we are in the essential oil business. So um, here are some ways that essential oils can help you in your um, gardening journey. So one of the big things with gardens is keeping out pests, right? Um, my squash plants this year got eaten by some squash bugs. And so here are some oils that you can use, put them in a spray bottle, add five to 10 drops, um, depending on what kind of pest it is, if you can find them. Um, and then there's a lot of uh, oils that are used the same that you can just, if you don't know what it is, um, peppermint is probably a good one to go with just to keep the bugs away. Um, so really cool that these are great for keeping your plants healthy, not having to use a pesticide. Um, we don't want that stuff on our plants, right? Um, and then um, really just keeping it organic. Some other oils for gardening, um, too much heat, use your peppermint roller on your sunburn. It's amazing for cooling off your body as well if you're getting too hot. Um, again, lavender is for sunburn as well. Um, Tear Shield is our outdoor blend, so um, if you're outside working and the mosquitoes are bothering you, get your Tear Shield out. And then Purify for the bug bites after they get you. Um, it really helps with the itching and then Correct X here is for any kind of skin irritations. Um, use your gloves while gardening. And then Deep Blue for once you've bought all your soil and you've shoveled it. I mean, this is hard work, guys, right? Self-sufficient living is fun, but it's a lot of work too. Um, but it is rewarding work. So use your Deep Blue for all your sore, achy muscles when you're done. Okay, so we've got our garden in, right? And now we need a protein source, chickens. I never knew chickens had such a personality until we got our chickens. Um, they are hilarious and they follow us around like little dogs. Um, but chickens are very inexpensive. You can order chickens from a, a reputable, reputable breeder. You can buy them at Tractor Supply for like $2 too. Um, but they're easy, easy to care for. Give them a nice uh, dry shelter and they're pretty happy. Um, and they're also great for pest control. This picture right here is something that we're working on at our house right now. And it's using your chickens <laughs> to actually help with the, the pests in your garden. Obviously you don't want your chickens in your garden because they're gonna eat whatever you're growing. But this cool little mesh wire that they've done in this picture, um, it's a neat way, an inexpensive way to take care of your garden and feed your chickens. Um, okay, so using some essential oils with your chickens. Um, right now I've got a wounded chicken. I don't know what got her, but it didn't kill her. 
and we're using some owie sprays, what we call it, but it's a mixture of lavender, tea tree, and frankincense, 10 drops in a, um, a small spray bottle, and it is safe to use on them. Just spray that directly on the wound. And we also keep oils in their water. So On Guard is antibacterial, antiviral. Um, it just helps boost their immune system, keep them healthy. And then oregano is also really good for antiviral. And these are also good for parasites. So they're anti-parasitic. So they're gonna deworm your chickens. Um, and just you know, one drop per gallon of water. So if you, if you have a large waterer, one drop of each of those per gallon. Okay, so we're moving on to in the kitchen. All right, so self-sufficient in the kitchen. Okay, so we've got our garden, we've got our chickens, so we're getting some fresh vegetables and fruit and eggs, right? Um, so we're gonna start cooking from scratch. We're saving money. We're cooking the things that we're growing um, using our harvests. Sometimes our harvest this past fall was just eggs, so we had a lot of breakfast. Um, that's a big thing with being self-sufficient is being frugal and um, using what you have. So I think one night we had eggs and squash because that's what we grew outside. Um, and I've got some cool recipes that I've developed on just throwing stuff together. Um, stock up on your non-perishables that you can't grow, like flour or rice and store them in airtight containers so they last a long time. There's a, there's a cool picture up here of some um, glass containers. And then save your leftover food. We are a very wasteful culture and we throw away food a lot. Um, that's what my chickens eat. They probably eat, I think you're supposed to keep it more like one third scraps, two thirds commercial feed. Mine are pretty much the opposite, but they're also free range. So they eat a lot of worms and bugs, um, but we feed them a lot of scraps. Um, and then start a compost with the rest of your leftovers. Compost is actually really easy. I was very intimidated by, intimidated by it, but it's very, very easy. We just took a, um, a drum with a lid and poked holes in it and then started throwing all kinds of stuff in there. Um, and then your eggshell. So if you're getting a bunch of eggs every single day and you're cooking eggs every single day, you've got these eggshells going to waste, right? Um, they can actually be ground up and put back into your garden to help with the calcium levels in your garden. Um, and then steep meat bones overnight for making your own uh, stock. I make my own chicken broth. Um, so that's, that saves you a ton of money there too because you're using everything that you're producing. And I just added this uh, fun little recipe. These are my kids here on the bottom right. They're making making their favorite um, muffins. Um, they don't realize how healthy they are and I don't care, um, but they love them. They taste really, really good, but it, it takes care of, our zucchini blew up this year. So it takes care of the zucchini um, that you might have stashed around just to make a whole bunch of healthy muffins um, and carrot. So take a snapshot of that recipe and try it. It's really good. Okay, so. How are we gonna use our essential oils in the kitchen for cooking? Um, so essential oils, they can be used year round. You don't have to wait for specific seasons or you know, your, I still have an herb garden, I do, um, cause I love fresh herbs as well. They're, they make everything pretty too. Um, but essential oils have a long shelf life. Um, they just need to be stored in a cool, dry place. They're in amber bottles, so they're dark keep them away from sun and heat, and they will last forever. Um, and they taste so good because they taste like fresh herbs. Your dried herbs are great to have, but they do lose a lot of their flavor. I feel like I am just dumping in seasoning sometimes versus just putting a drop or two of my essential oil. Um, and be careful because they are very potent, very concentrated. So start with one drop, and then taste test and then go from there. Um, if you are cooking something and you're heating it, I would add your oils at the end of that process. Um, but here are some oils that is recommended in the kitchen. I use all of these. I also use a lot of lemon. I don't have lemon up here, um, but I love thyme and rosemary with chicken. Um, basil is yummy. 
And then your citrus oils are great, sweet and sour stuff. Um, and then doTERRA just came out with these cool cuisine blends. There's a Mexican blend, Italian blend, and tropical, which you don't even have to think about that, right? You're like, oh, okay, I'm making tacos. I'm gonna go grab my Mexican blend. And they taste so yummy. Okay, so we're moving on to cleaning. We just went through a, um, some sh shortages, right, on your Lysol wipes and your aerosol sprays and all of those things. That's not what this class is about, but those are so bad for you, okay? They're so bad for you, and we're trying to keep our lungs healthy right now, our respiratory systems healthy right now, and all of those things affect your respiratory system. So please lay off the Lysol wipes. I'm going to give you some other things you can use and the aerosols. We got some stuff for you, okay? So take notes. Um, here are three products that I have on hand all the time. Um, baking soda, Castile soap, and white vinegar work amazing, okay? You don't have to have all the other junk in your cleaner for you to do a really good job. All right, and then we get to add our oils to those products and make it even more powerful. So over here on the left, my cool friend Toya made these and I stole them from her. But so this is kind of a use this instead of this. So we talked about this yucky aerosols and irritant products. So you've got your um, plugins and I don't even know what you call that thing because I've never bought one of those little mister things. Makes the room smell good, smell good, right? With chemicals and your Febreze. Let's replace that with a diffuser. <clears throat> that's going to last you a long time and then you get to choose whichever kind of essential oil you want to use. Um, any citruses are going to be antibacterial. Um, I prefer On Guard because it helps purify the air, cleanse it, and it smells like Christmas. Um, so just a simple swap there <clears throat> and um, again your oils are going to be around for a long time. They're not going to lose their smell and get rid of your candles too. That's not up there, but throw those out too. Um, and then at the bottom, you see all of these Clorox, Windex, Pledge, all of those products. Um, you can pretty much throw those out and replace them with On Guard Cleaner Concentrate, which is this bottle right here. Um, I clean everything with this. <laughs> Toilets, um, surfaces, dishes, you name it. I mop my floor with it. Um, and it is 100% safe, natural, and way more effective than those products there. So again, we've got baking soda, vinegar, spray bottle. This is probably an all-purpose spray. Um, you could make window spray out of these products right here. So having these versus having all of this. I used to open up my, my cabinet underneath my kitchen sink, and it was just full of products, right? And then you have like a two-year-old or a toddler running around, you have to put one of those locks on your cabinets and then I can't even get in those locks. So it's been really nice having just like three products under my sink that he can go grab and play with if he wants to. So um, here are some of our top oils and how you can use them for green cleaning. Tea tree is um, really good. It's antibacterial, antifungal. Use it on the dirty places in your house like your toilets, um, sinks, bathroom surfaces, yoga mats, it's very good uh, for sanitizing. Lemon is awesome. Lemon works for everything. Floors, wood, glass, stainless steel. Um, I have this in my window spray, but I also just use lemon by itself to clean my stovetop, clean any grease, even permanent marker. <laughs> lemon is amazing. Um, and I also keep it by my sink. I have a white farmhouse sink, ceramic sink, and once you pour tea and coffee in there, it's brown. And lemon and bacon soda are amazing for just cleaning white surfaces. It's kind of like a bleach alternative. Peppermint, um, make your laundry smell amazing. Um, it's a bug repellent, uh, repels insects, and then an air freshener, and for cleaning. Oregano is a very powerful oil. It is a very strong smelling oil, but it's a very powerful, powerful oil. 
and it says damp and dark areas. I'm assuming that means mold um, and any of your surfaces in your bathroom. I have that hard calcium, I guess, in my water, This the orange, iron, maybe it's iron. Anyway, my water turns orange, my surfaces turn orange really quick. And so um, oregano and On Guard work really good for that. And then On Guard is our all-purpose cleaner, cleans everything, sanitizes everything. So get rid of your Lysol, your Clorox, and use On Guard. All right, here's some of the, I mentioned some of these. So you can take a screenshot of these. Um, these are basically the three products that I use. Window cleaner, vinegar, water, lemon. Surface cleaner is your on guard and water in a spray bottle. And then a toilet bowl tile scrub or farmhouse white sink, baking soda, tea tree, and vinegar. Okay. Another part of our self-sufficient living is being able to take care of our common health issues at home, our first aid, um, and being empowered with tools for that. So um, essential oils, if you've been to any of our, uh, of, any of our other classes, um, they are 100% natural and safe. There are no side effects. There's no addictions. So way safer than anything prescribed or over the counter. They are from plants, obviously, and they're 50 to 70 times more powerful than like herbal medicine. So super concentrated. Um, they are more effective than modern approaches because they actually get down to the root cause. Um, we're not treating side effects. Um, and they are way more affordable. They are pennies per dose. We've just shown you a ton of other ways you can use these oils um, for your garden, um, for your cleaning and for cooking. And now at the same time, they're going to help with your health issues. Okay, so the picture on the left is an improved medicine cabinet, right? We got the left side before they attended this class and the right side is after you attend this class and you throw all that other junk away, right? Um, and again, these are products that are going to sit on that shelf for a long time. Um, a lot of those things on the left are not. They're going to expire quickly. And um, not to mention, they have side effects. Almost all of those things have side effects. Um, and they're just not as clean, um, clean ingredient. So uh, here on the right, these are our, some of our top oils. And if you look at it, it kind of tells you what these are compared to for over-the-counter drugs. So like peppermint, anything digestive. So Pepto-Bismol, Tums, um, it's for, great for energy, stimulating to the brain. So energy, energy drinks. Um, and then for respiratory, you got Tylenol, cold, Sudafed, Zyrtec, Claritin for allergies. So if you have all of those things in your cabinet, you can literally get rid of those and replace it with a $22 bottle of peppermint. And I guarantee that's going to save you a ton of money because it does all the same things as that does. So if you look through here, lavender, great for um, cuts, wounds, allergies, and helping you go to sleep, digestion, again, anything digestive. And that one also helps with congestion. Um, it's a decongestant. Deep blue is going to be for pain. Um, so Tylenol, Motrin, Aleve, Bengay, Thermacare, all of those things, throw those out. Lemon is a great detox. Um, it's great for mucus, decongestant again. Um, so all of those that are there. Melaleuca or tea tree, as it's known now, um, is antifungal, antibacterial, um, great for ear health. Um, so, and then it's also antiviral as well. So your NyQuil's, DayQuil's, all of that gone. Um, your Breathe, your VIX, that's basically what people compare it to. It's like a natural VIX. Um, and it is amazing for people that are asthmatic. So um, throw all that stuff out. My husband has not used his inhaler in at least two years now. So it's been pretty cool. And then oregano is basically our natural antibiotic, which you can buy over the counter. but 
um, you would probably buy like a NyQuil or DayQuil and make you feel better. Um, and so those are just a few things that these things can replace for health, as well as all the other things that we've talked about. So some things to have on hand for an emergency, first aid. Um, these rollers right here on your left are super easy to use and they're just nice to have um, ready to go um, in your shelf, on your, in your medicine cabinet, just grab it and go. And the cool thing is, it says for parents, but my kids know that the purple is lavender and it's for bug bites or boo-boos. So they already know how to take care of themselves. And as a busy mom, that's kind of cool to say, hey, will you just go grab that really quick and take care of yourself? Um, and I don't have to supervise them taking medication or anything like that. So we've got a tamer um, blend, which is for digestive, tummy, motion sickness, nausea, and then lavender again, skin, sleep, calming, any boo-boos, we put lavender on it. And then bug bites, it's like a Benadryl um, for any kind of swelling that you might have. Tea tree, anything skin, tea tree is great for anything skin. Um, and then correct X is like a natural neosporin. So those are cool things to have on hand to just grab in case you need them. The other one I would add here that I didn't add is helichrysum, which is an amazing oil for um, stopping bleeding. So nosebleeds or maybe a really bad wound, you can put that oil directly on the cut and it will help coagulate the blood and stop the bleeding. Over here on the right, we have some more of our top oils. We've got our On Guard hand sanitizer, having that on hand right now, it's kind of an emergency. Maybe you touch something really gross at the grocery store and you got your sanitizing spray. Um, you've got your On Guard roller. We're using that daily to boost immunes, immune systems on the spine, on the feet. Um, and then again, we got tea tree, lavender, peppermint, and digestion. So again, top 10 oils, common uses. We've kind of gone over this. This on the right here is um, a huge one right now. This is, we call it flume. Um, all five of these oils, frankincense, lemon, oregano, on guard, and melaleuca are antiviral. They're also antibacterial, but they are the most powerful antivirals. And so these five together is something we're using for prevention in the middle of a pandemic. And um, we're passing these out as samples for people who are not feeling good as well. So we always have a roller bottle on hand with flume in it, refill it often, use it daily on the spine, on the feet. If you're sick every 20 minutes, if you're using it as prevention, maybe once a day or something right now, usually it's not, but right now we're using it about once a day. All right, so those are some of the five components, things that you can do right now to kind of maybe start that self-sufficient lifestyle. Um, I'm pretty excited because once we started looking into this um, topic, we had so many ideas. And so we really tried to keep this one general um, and just kind of touch on some easy things. Hopefully you still gleaned some things. I tried to add some good value in here for you. If you're already a veteran for these things, hopefully you gleaned something. Um, but be on the lookout for some more workshops on other homesteading topics and getting out of debt, saving you money. So you're not tied to somebody else owing them money. So um, Kelsey, do you want to say something? No? Okay. All right. So all of these oils right here are the ones that we talked about. And I showed you everything that you can do with these, everything that you can replace, um, that you can use them on your animals. We will go into deeper. I use these on my horses. I use these on my dog. I use them on everybody here. I know we talked about chickens, but there's so much more. Um, and then for cooking and cleaning and our healthcare. So all of them are right here in this kit. This is the Healthy Start Kit. We can call it the Self-Sufficient Living Starting Kit, right? You got your diffuser, throw out your aerosols, throw out your aerosols, throw out your aerosols. Anyway, um, this kit right here is $160. You get 10 of these oils plus this diffuser, a 10 hour diffuser. So great way to get these in your hands. 
Um, and then once you get them, don't worry, we're here. We're going to help you. Um, we have more recipes to share with you. We're going to get you set up and um, started on your oil journey and your self-sufficient living journey. All right, guys, that's all I have. If you have any questions, um, please reach out to me or Kelsey Watson or um, comment on one of our videos and we'd be happy to help you. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.